So the principles of solving this is, again, imagine that it's like any 4x4, four four, and you're just pairing the corners of that. So, so what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to find another purple. Here's another purple. I'm going to put it into position so that it's just above and across. So this needs to move down here, and just above it is one that's, that I'm going to, you know, replace it with. So this is going to come down. Here, replace, down, across, and up. So we get this paired, and everything else is where it needs to be. <clears throat> Just as an example of another one, let's do the red one. Here's red. So find another red. Here's another red. We're going to put the red into position, hovering just above it. Okay. And same kind of thing. We're going to move this down and it's going to be replaced by this, we're going to substitute those two. So, move it down, cross, down, across, and then back up. So the centers are replaced, so this is very similar to the corners. So, I'm just going to solve all the corners and take it from there. Okay, I'm just picking it up where I left last time. So a lot of the challenge of these skewed or these different colored cubes is to see if you can apply similar strategies of what's familiar onto these things by just changing your perspective. It makes the solve a lot more satisfying and interesting. Just applying the same concepts into a slightly different environment and seeing if it works. So here's my burgundy and I'm almost done with all my colors here and it goes pretty fast. Here and up. Here's a white one. So move that into position. Try to find one that is not the right, not in position. Pink. Do it with pink. And there it is here. And I think we're almost. No. There's more to do. A couple of things can happen towards the end, one of which is as you're doing this, everything just neatly and automatically gets solved. Another possibility is that you end up with a slight parity problem, and that's what I'm hoping we'll get just to illustrate what happens. Okay, so we need to find, there should be at least one more, which is right here, right there, so down and then do our replacement. Okay, put the blue back in. Could it be? No, there must be one more. Which one? Oh, right there. Like so many times, it was right under my nose. So uh, we'll bring this up and do our replacement. Okay, so in this particular case, they all just got solved. But there could be a situation where you end up with a parity situation. So this is that situation that I'm talking about, where these are your last two pieces and you, um, there are two pieces left. They're not quite in alignment to do that, that final solve, and you don't have anything else to, um, to do with. So this, if you, if you notice, if I hold it like this, it looks just like a similar situation that we had in any 4x4. Four four. So uh, you're basically going to be doing that side flip algorithm that you learned so long ago, which is going to be the R, F, I, U, R, I, U, F. So let's see if it works. First you split it, you bring one side to the next, and then you start your algorithm. So R, F, I, U, R, F, and then bring it back. So it's actually I think I said it wrong, it's R, F, I, U, R, I, F, and then you just slice it back. And then you see everything is where it needs to be. 
all of the uh, centers and, and all of the sides. So the next part is, is that we'll just line them all up. Let's make sure that these centers are where they need to be. I'm going to pick one side just by convention. I always start off with green. So here's green. Move green to where it's supposed to be. Where's the other? Green center. There it is. And move that on up. So I'm going to solve this just the way I did the the three layer version of this by putting everything where it's supposed to be. And at this point it's almost exactly the, uh, the same. So just by uh, the same as the three layer because you've really taken it down to um, to a three layer form. So bring this down, up, back. I got that there. Let's get the burgundy side. It's right here. So just maneuver it around. And you can kind of accelerate to this. This is already in place. We'll find the white one. Here it is. And just kind of intuit your way through it. So here we've got our first side. So looking closer and closer to where we need to be. Now we just want to fill in these middles and it's done exactly the same as a three by three. So I, I invite you to figure that out so that you can have that thrill of discovery. And the algorithm is going to be the same. Move it to the side, and it's the same algorithm as putting it in on a 3x3. Three three. So that's good. Purple, purple here. And lo and behold, we're that much closer. I'm just doing a layer by layer method. Now, this final one really, uh, this has the super cube issue going on and you want to be lining up these centers with where, where they're supposed to be. So I'm just going to line them up now to see where things are at. So this green is all information. This is not, the silver, this is not, and this is not. What I'm going to do from here is I'm actually going to solve these corners. After I solve these corners, we're going to deal with these centers, and there's a variety of different types of parodies that, um, that can happen. Um, to deal with these corners, just do it like you did the last step on a 3x3. Three three. So is this in the right place? Well, no, it's not. So I'm going to come around here. Is this in the right place? Uh, well, it is, but it's turned around. We've got the blue, purple, and silver. Is this in the right place? No, this... No, so what I'm going to do is that algorithm of flipping all of these that you learned with a 3x3. Three three. That's going to be here, 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 here. This is very similar to what we did when we were moving our centers around, by the way. But instead of moving the centers around, we're moving the corners around. So this is where it needs to be still. This is now where it needs to be. Orange, pink, and well, yeah, blue. So all of these, either one is going to be in place or the rest are going to be in place and just solve all these corners the way that, the way that you know you're supposed to. The, uh, these and these are all, all have to be lined up. That way we can say that they're all the same. So I'm just going to go through that real quick. This is the part in solving it, whether it's the final solve of a three by three or what we're doing now, where you have to have faith in the algorithm. This is where it needs to be. I'm going to move this over and keep, keep going like that. Even if you don't exactly understand how it works or why it works, just to know that it does work is pretty cool. It's nice to know why it works, but not necessary. And last, and probably least. So, looking pretty good. Put this back in place. This magically, seemingly, um, got didn't get scrambled. 
and everything is fine here, but you see that all of these centers are not where they need to be. All right, so these all appear to be flipped, uh, but I just need to flip them back into, into place. So I'm going to flip these two and see what happens. All right, these got flipped, but this got rotated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip these two. Oh. And it got solved again. Okay, so we're going to pick it up from this confirmation where everything here is solved. We just have these middle ones that have to be flipped around. And the basic strategy that I'm going for is I'd like to put these middle ones opposite of where they're supposed to be. Just easier for me to solve that way. So this yellow is opposite where it's supposed to be, but I want this green to be either here or here. So I'm going to want to do a switch, and I'm probably going to want to switch it with maybe the uh, um, maybe the silver one because the silver one will land it here. So if I can just switch these, it'll be where I want it to be. So it's, I'm just going to do a middle flip, same type of algorithm you've seen with a three by three by four. So that's going to be two R Daddy, that is you two R you. 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, U prime, 2R. So that creates that parity situation, but let's see where it put us. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these middles back into formation here. So I'm just going to put them back where they need to be. Well, the middle has kind of got flipped around here. So this is where it needs to be. This is where it needs to be. And we have, these are pretty much lined up, but they're not lined up according to here. So now I'm going to do a um, center flip like this. Flipping these two is going to do two things. It's going to flip these two and it's also going to turn these by 180 degrees and get this parity back. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. So I know it's kind of confusing, but uh, basically this put this where it needs to be and this where it needs to be, which gives me my final parity situation. I got this back here. To solve this parity, basically you want to do it exactly the same way that you did with a super cube. Um, and I'll post the uh, I'll post the um, uh, algorithm on the um, notes there. And basically, what uh, what you're going to want to do exactly the same way is going to be uh, is going to be uh, the top U here, which I guess we'll call a uh, big U. So U, and then U prime. You know, basically you're splitting it down here. U, R, F prime, and then U, R prime, F, and then you're going to split it again, but this time the other way. So you're going to go U prime, and then split it down here in the middle to uh, U. And then the downside, you're going to be splitting it down here. So down prime and then just D from the middle. And then you're going to go F prime, R, U prime, and then F, R prime, and bring it on back to D from the middle. And that will solve it. And that covers basically much of the parody situations that we have. And that solves our puzzle.